Hi, this is Karen Greenhouse, and today I'm going to be comparing how to find a minimum and maximum point on a graph of a function using both the Casio prism and the TI-84 so that you can see similarities and differences. So I have both emulators here in front of me, uh, Casio on the left, TI on the right. Um, we're on the home screen of both, and so we want to get to the graph where we can enter a function. So on the Casio, our menu here we can either hit number five or arrow down. I'm going to hit number five, and that takes me right to my y equals screen. On the TI-84, all I have to do is hit the y equals screen, and I'm at the y equals. So let's enter our function. We're going to use a cubic at this point, just because I know it's going to have a both a max and a min. So I wanted to show you how to do both. So our function, let's do it on the Casio first. Uh, we've got x to the third minus 4x squared plus 2x, oops, didn't mean to do that, 2x plus 7. And to set it on the Casio, we hit execute, um, and that has set the function for us. And over here on the 84, you'll notice pretty much it's exactly the same, the main difference being where those uh, buttons are. So my variable buttons here and over on the Casio, it's kind of in a different column down a row. Um, and my x squareds on the left down on the TI and on the Casio, it's up more towards the top. Same process though. So we're going to enter x to the third minus 4 4x squared plus 2x plus 7. And on the TI, I hit enter instead of execute. And so now I have both equations set. One thing to note is that they're both colored calculators, but notice that the function appears on the Casio in the color it will appear. Um, so you actually see the function in blue, and when you graph it's blue. Over here on the TI, we only know it's going to be blue because of the little blue box on the, the left hand. We don't actually see it in the function. So let's actually graph the function. Let's see it. They're both going to be blue functions on our screen. So on the Casio, draw is where we're going to graph. It's F6. Notice on TI, it's kind of in the same place. We just call it the graph button. So I'm going to hit draw, and there is my graph on the Casio. And if I hit the graph button on the TI, I get pretty much the same graph. It's a little slower coming up. Um, the Casio, notice, has my axes labeled, and I have some numbers showing up as well. I don't see that on the TI. So now what I want is, notice this function, one of the reasons I picked it is it has both a max and a min. And I can see that on both of these graphs in both calculators. So now I want to actually find the coordinates of that max and that min for this particular function. So for both, I kind of do the next step sort of similar. I want to solve. I want to find something on the graph. So on the Cassie, I'm going to hit here, G solve, hit F5. It gives me my menus right here on the screen, right beneath my graph, which is nice because then I don't have to, um, and I hit this arrow here, F6, to see some more options. Let's get back to where we were. So my options are right here on the graph. I can see the graph and my options. Over here on the 84, it's sort of in the same place. I've got this calc up here. It's in blue. It means to hit the second button first. And again, I get a menu of options of things I can find. However, my graphs disappeared. So if I want to see the graph, I've kind of got to toggle back and then hit second calc again to get my menu. So I'm on the Casio, I can see the graph, I'm gonna find the max first. So all I have to do is find my option here. So I've got max, that's under my F2. So I'm going to hit F2 and it's saying is, and there it is, boom, got it. And what I'd like to do is, yeah, that's my uh, max right there. Here's the coordinates of it. I'd like to set that point so that I can see it. So on the Casio, I'm gonna hit execute. And what that does, it actually sets a point right there on my graph with those coordinates so that it doesn't disappear. Let's go over and find that on the TI. Let's see the difference here. So I want the max so I can arrow down to the four or just hit the four. And now on the TI it's a little different. I have to actually kind of create a boundary. Where is the maximum point within a boundary? So it's asking me first for a left bound. So I want to make sure I'm a little to the left of where that max point is. Hit enter and it creates a boundary line. And then it's asking me where's your right bound area. So let's 
scroll over just a little to the right of where that max point is and say yes that's our right bound ti asks you for a guess i tend to never do this because it's just an extra scroll i don't need to do i hit enter and then it will give me my set value um, I can't set that like when I hit enter here it just disappears I see the max and now I'm done so let's but I don't actually see the point still on here so I just have the coordinates here I want to probably write them down because they're not going to stay on the screen like they are in the Casio well now we know we have also a minimum for this so let's go back so we're gonna hit our Casio it's f5 so I can get the minimum and for uh, the TI, I'm going to hit second calc to get my options. Again, the graph disappears, but on the Casio, I still see the graph. And notice I also still see the coordinates for that um, max point. So now I want the min. So we're going to do F3 on the Casio. It's going to move to my minimum point. Notice I have a nice point here where my max was. It still has its coordinates, all still seeing on my graph. So that's great. And there's my minimum with its coordinates. And again, I want to set it by hitting execute. And I should be done. So there's my two coordinates. I've got my max and my min. Let's go over here. I have to do the same process on the TI. I want the min this time. So I'm going to go down. Let's scroll this time. Hit my three, hit enter. I am going to be asked again my boundaries. So please notice that the minute I got out of the graph, I lost my max point. It's no longer there. If I want it, I have to find it again. Um, so let's set our boundary here for the minimum. So my left, let's go a little to the right. Enter. I think I went a little too far, but it doesn't really actually matter. You just need a bound as long as it's a minimum in there. So hit enter. I made a guess and there's my minimum point and there's the coordinates so it's a much more um, labor intensive to get to the max and min for the TI you do have to make sure you record them because they won't stay on the screen on the Casio it's very quick and it also allows you to keep those points and mark those points on the graph so that if we let's just exit out of this and let's go back to our draw if I get out and come back I still see my max and min on my grid so the Cassie is nicer visually it's a, it has the points has coordinates it's a lot quicker and you can do a lot more exploration because now you have those points you have to, don't have to keep going back and forth they're there and you can use them as you need so that's my quick little um, demonstration on finding a max and a min of a function